Hello guys, today we will be reviewing the infamous American-made PSA GF3. Some disclaimers for the review. This rifle was sent to me to review by PSA, with the option to send it back after 60 days or purchase it at a discount. I did the latter option. I also have liked PSA as a company for a very long time and have had a good few conversations with one of the heads of marketing, and they were great. So I've had very positive experiences with PSA, but I want to assure you, I am not going to recommend a product to my audience that I wouldn't be comfortable recommending to someone I love and care about. I'm not in the business of recommending products that would be unwise spending decisions or put you in danger. So anyway, let's get to the review. American-made AKs have had a bad rap for a while. If you want a decent AK, everyone knows you should buy imported. However, PSA is doing everything they can to make AKs cheap and accessible again, and trying to single-handedly make an affordable AK aftermarket. They have knockoff versions of popular AK handguards and rails, they're making domestic steel case 7.62x39 ammo, and of course, domestic cheap AKs. The GF3 has been out for about a half decade, and when it first came out, it was rough. Many reviews reported premature wear, complete and total failure after just a few hundred rounds, unacceptable accuracy even for AKs, etc. So have these issues been fixed? Well, let's talk about the feature set of this AK. You'll notice I have replaced the furniture, but the core gun is still the same. It has a side rail for mounting optics. It is compatible with the vast majority of AKM aftermarket parts. It has a hammer forged bolt, front trunnion and carrier, and standard AK sights. It also has a threaded M14 by one LH muzzle. Its barrel is a gas nitrite 4150 steel barrel with a 9.5 twist rate, and it can mount a bayonet. It also has room for a cleaning rod, but it does not come with one. The version I received came with basic plastic furniture. It has none of the class of traditional wood AK furniture, and it is my least favorite kind of furniture. It also has none of the functionality of modern polymer handguards. Like Glock sites, this furniture is just a placeholder until you get something else. As far as my copy goes, I have only fired a good 500 rounds through it. That has been a mix of IG Man, Romanian Surplus, and PSA Steelcase. I acknowledge that this is not a whole lot, however, I did have to cover my own ammo expenses. It should be said, I have had zero malfunctions of any kind between a wide variety of magazines, and there is not concerning wear parts on any of the internal parts. As far as accuracy goes, with a cheap LPVO on top, I have been able to attain Minute of Man accuracy very easily. It is certainly accurate enough for any self-defense or LARPing purposes. I also am making a modernized book out of this just to experiment with 7.62x39 as a DMR cartridge. I don't expect it to be that practical, but it should be a lot of fun. So subscribe if you want to see the results of that project. I have been shooting AR-15s for about five or six years straight at this point, and shooting the AK was almost an alien experience at first, but when I was shooting its first 100 rounds in the desert, I felt alive. My love for guns reignited. It's hard to explain, but the AK has that old world spirit that the AR could never possibly have. The AR-15 was one of the first guns of the new era, made out of polymer and aluminum, using steel only for the most critical parts. The AK was one of the last guns designed in the same manner as guns designed a century before it. It was designed with wood and steel because those were the materials you made guns out of. This means that even running a modern manufactured AK will give off a little bit of that old world energy that people like me crave in every other aspect of our lives. The gun will also come with a PSA manufactured magazine. At first, I was very skeptical of this. Magazines are the primary point of failure on semi-automatic firearms and very hard to get right. AKs are even more complicated due to the fact that they need reinforced steel at the top of the mag due to a relatively violent reloading process. However, this magazine works shockingly well. It does have reinforced steel at the top and has worked fine so far. I'm not going to recommend it yet. If you are going to buy aftermarket AK mags, you would be better off getting something a little more proven, but so far, this mag is totally fine. The AK is also going to be a lot more expensive to accessorize and modify. Most AR-15s come stock with a top rail for mounting optics and handguards equipped with everything you need to mount a light and a sling. 
AKs, on the other hand, are far more difficult and expensive to modernize. Just to get a rear rail to put a magnified optic on is going to cost at minimum 100 bucks, but probably more like 150. Bottom hand guards for mounting lights and better sling mounts are also going to be an additional one to $200. So at minimum, you're gonna be spending an additional $200 to bring this thing up to speed with an AR. With the price tag of the GF3 being at 630, that would bring you up to 830 minimum. That's just to get it ready for accessories. For 830, you can get a PSA PA15 for 500 bucks, a $100 Streamlight, a $30 Tactical Distributor Sling, and $200 left in the budget for a decent optic, whether it be a cheap LPVO, a cheap Prism, or a pretty decent red dot. I am pointing this out because money is tight in the United States. We're going through rapid inflation and wages are not keeping up. Yep. If people want to equip themselves with these expensive yet important tools for securing life and liberty, they need to be efficient with their money. Every dollar needs to count. Listen, the AK platform is a ton of fun. It's a gun with accessories and features that are literal carryovers from World War I, yet through brute force can be modified to perform as a decent general purpose rifle that can compete with AR-15s. It's a gun that reignited my love for shooting, and its weight motivates me to be a little more physically competent. If you are set on getting an AK, then the PSA GF3 will perform just fine and is a great way to get your feet wet with the platform. The one caveat I will give with my recommendation is that you need to understand that although my specific GF3 is performing fine with no issues, there have been plenty in the past that have had issues. Cheap guns are cheap for a reason. PSA makes well over 10,000 rifles a day. Inevitably, some of them are going to have issues that will not be caught by quality control. This is a risk you take with buying any cheap part or any gun, so keep that in mind. Now the bigger question is, does the AK platform have a place in the wider world of prepping and civilian preparedness? You used to be able to get a cheap AK for 300 bucks and a thousand round crate of ammo for under a hundred. The big selling point of the AK was that it shot a 30 caliber bullet, it was more reliable than an AR, and far cheaper. Well, nowadays, people know that ARs are just as reliable as AKs, if not more so. 5.56 is an extremely lethal cartridge, and no one seriously disputes that anymore. And they are the budget option. AKs are now a bougie rifle. AKs are the 20-year-old girl at Harvard pretending to be broke and oppressed. All the things that made an AK a no-brainer are no longer true. Now, I'm going to continue to use the AK for a few reasons. For one, 30 caliber ammunition makes more sense if you encounter moose on a regular basis and there are grizzlies in your locale, like mine. AKs also are a little bit better in the winter than ARs, and frankly, something about it is just so much more fun and interesting than an AR. Maybe it's because it's the only gun where you can have modern furniture and wood furniture that's over five decades old on it, and it doesn't even look that bad. Maybe it's because it has an Old West vibe to it, despite it being from the Far East. I'm not sure, but I can tell you one thing. More than any gun I have ever owned, this one makes me feel alive. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are interested in this rifle, there may or may not be a campsite link in the description below. That may or may not get you to where you need to go to get your hands on this thing. You will also see a link for Civilian Expedition Outfitters where I sell stickers to help support the channel. I also want to say thank you to Palmetto State Armory for the opportunity to review this rifle. Seriously, I'm a very, very small channel. It's ridiculous you ever agreed to work with me in the first place, but I am very grateful for it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful rest of your day.